I was rearranging my 3DS games the other day, and I began to admire my Club Nintendo game cases. I've talked about them before, and I just want to reiterate how great I think these are. They're just so efficient and have a great form factor. One of these holds 18 DS or 3DS cartridges in the space of one standard DS game case. Why Nintendo hasn't brought these to standard retail, I don't understand. Although there is a company that makes one with a nearly identical design. They seem to have eliminated the outer cover sleeve and instead offer your choice of color. I have a link to these Amazon listings in the description. Looking at these reminded me that I've always liked ideas such as this. I used to use a very similar method to hold my Game Boy Advance cartridges. I made my own game cases out of DVD keep cases and in this video I'll show you how it's done. Before we make these cases, I wanted to take a moment to touch on other storage methods I use for my other handheld games. I love handheld systems and games, and I have plenty of both. For a lot of these systems, I only have a few games, so generally these games fit in the carry case I have for that system. This is not true for these systems, however. I could keep these games in their original boxes and cases on my media racks, but as I've alluded to before, I only have so much shelf space. Often I need my collection to take up less of that space. Also, I like having my handheld games accessible in a way that in one grab I can take several on the go. For example, here are my PSP games and other UMDs. I have this zippered folio that was made by Case Logic to hold Sony mini discs. The UMD is similar enough in size to the mini disc that this case works out pretty well, especially for these sleeved discs back here. This case holds 24 UMDs. For my Game Boy games, I use this really useful box, 3 liter size. I found YouTube channel Retro Game Tech using a similar box for his Game Boy Advance games. He also talks about why he doesn't like storing his games in their original cardboard boxes. I recommend checking it out if you get a chance. Speaking of Game Boy Advance games, I currently use these Nintendo licensed zippered cases to store them. Each one holds 32 GBA games, and it's even roomy enough inside to hold odd cartridges such as WarioWare Twisted. It is a very versatile case, and some people have even used them to hold UMDs or even DS games. The actual name of this product is the Ultimate Game Library, but this name doesn't appear on the case itself. This makes finding them used difficult, because without the original retail sleeve, sellers don't know what to call them. They are tough to find, and for a while they were highly sought after, but if you like it, it might be worth the effort to track down. But before I got these folios, I wasn't satisfied with any of the Game Boy Advance game cases on the market. Since I couldn't find a satisfactory case to buy, I decided I had to solve the problem for myself. Seeing the memory card slots built into PS2 and GameCube cases gave me the inspiration that I wanted a DVD-sized case that held Game Boy Advance games. A case of this size would be exactly large enough to hold 10 GBA cartridges. This would be ideal for me. It would fit in perfectly on my media shelf right next to my GameCube games. I could easily pull a game out to use in my Game Boy Player, or I could grab the whole case and take it on the go. I hoped someone would manufacture something like this, but when that didn't happen, I decided to make my own, and now I'll show you how to do the same. To begin this build, you'll need a DVD keep case. There are countless styles and variations in DVD cases, and some might be easier to work with than others, so use your best judgment. We're going to be cutting through parts of the case, but we want to keep the outer sleeve protected from damage. In order to do that, I'm going to slip a barrier in between. I could use like a small cutting board, but I think some cardboard will do the job just fine. We're going to remove the disc protection ring and DVD spindle. Now I'm going to use my high speed rotary tool uh, with a plastic cutting blade to do this, but if, if you don't have one, you can try a heavy pair of scissors or shears. I have cut this out with a box knife before. I don't really recommend that. It's, it's really easy for the blade to slip out while you're trying to cut, and I don't want anyone to get injured. It can be done, but you have to work really, really slowly and deliberately and make multiple passes. Now we're just going to remove the ring only, and we're going to try to leave as much of the rest of the case as we can. Since we're already cutting, we're going to remove these document clips as well. It's tempting to think that on a completed case they can hold your manuals, but unless you're using an extra deep case, there just isn't enough room, and the clips will be in the way of the cartridges. With those removed, you've opened up as much room as possible inside the case. You could store your games in here now, loose, but I'd rather build in a way to secure the cartridges. To do that, we'll need to cover this hole with some form of replacement panel. The kind of material we choose to do that will depend on how we decide to hold the cartridges. Ideally, we would affix a panel such as this inside. 
I modeled this mock-up in Tinkercad to better explain my goal. I considered trying to make a 3D print of this, or vacuum forming a similar panel, but to keep things simple, I experimented with alternatives. I tried to make panels by cutting out cartridge slots in cardboard and dollar store foam core. I did something similar once in some foam for some UMDs. It works pretty well for fewer games, but at the stated goal of 10 cartridges, there just isn't enough material left over to lend any kind of internal structure. I tried using magnets to attract the security screws with mixed results. A tacky surface like replaceable glue dots or a sheet of sticky silicone holds the games really well. They are sticky enough to hold on to the games and they don't leave residue behind on the cartridges. Inspired by the King of Random, I considered molding a cartridge holding sheet out of silicone. But I do have a disclaimer. There are examples of extended contact to certain materials actually damaging plastic. I've seen this in tackle boxes when a floppy plastic bait worm seems to leave a melted impression on an otherwise hard plastic surface. I don't really think this reaction happens between silicone rubber and plastic, but I'm not a chemist, so that's a consideration you'll have to make. Finally, when I first made these cases, this is the design that I used to hold the cartridges. To cover this hole, I decided to use a plastic panel. There are plastic sheets that could be purchased, or you could salvage a 5x7 or so panel from something you are throwing away or something from the dollar store. For this video, I decided to use the front panel from a second DVD case. I cut it out of the case and cut the document clips off. Now I'm just trimming it down to size so that it fits comfortably inside the walls of my case. That looks about right. Now I've created a template to help mark the inside of the case and I've linked to it in the description of this video. You can download it for free and print it out or you could just use these measurements. You can just eyeball it if you'd like. The method I'm showing you should compensate if you're off a little bit. If you use my template, cut it to size and poke small holes through the appropriate spots. I'm going to lay this down on my new panel and use a pencil to mark these 10 spots. The graphite is just shiny enough to see on this dark plastic. Now that that's done, I'll put a hole through each location. I could continue using my rotary tool, but I just like using a hot nail. If you have a soldering iron, that might work here too. Don't breathe this. I'm just trying to make a small hole. Now that that's done, I'll clear off the debris. Since I will be gluing this panel down, I'm going to have to extend some of these holes through the original plastic as well. So I'm laying my panel back in and using it as a template to mark the rest of the case. Anywhere that there's still plastic there, I've marked it. Instead of putting holes here, this time I'm going to make small slits about a half inch. I'm going to use my rotary tool again, but if you don't have one, you can try heating the end of a flathead screwdriver. Again, I'm going to protect the outer sleeve from damage. Now that that's finished, I can line it up and glue it in place. As far as gluing these pieces together, I've chosen a glue that's specifically made for plastic. If you have a good option to glue plastic parts together, let us know in the comments. Okay, my glue is now set and now we need some hair ties. I found these packs at two different dollar stores. The style doesn't really matter, we just need the kind that has this metal crimper and I chose ones with colors that I preferred. From the back of the case, push the elastic in through each hole. You can use a toothpick or a piece of wire to help. Here I just made a small hook out of a paper clip to pull the elastic through. When you pull it through, the crimper will wedge in place and back, and in these positions, the crimpers fit right into the slits that I made. I've finished all ten, and now we're almost done. You can slide your games into the elastic and it stops at the shoulders of the cartridge. They slide in and out really easily, but it holds them securely. Now it's time to really spruce this up with some custom cover art. Since we've kept our outer sleeve protected, we can slide the art right in. We can go with something ultra low tech, or you can customize and print your own in any design you want. Be as specific or as generic as you'd like. It's easy to find a DVD case art template, but be aware that in the US, these don't fit on letter sized paper unless your printer can print all the way to the edge. Alternatively, use a different paper size, like A4 or legal size paper, or print it in two parts. There's a lot of general information online about printing custom DVD covers, so I'll let you find that on your own. Pretty cool, huh? When you try this for yourself, there are a few more considerations to keep in mind. You can make an easier version of this project by turning the case over and making your cartridge holder on this side. Depending on the style of case you are using, you may only need to remove the spindle. I found that with certain cases, the ring really doesn't interfere much. 
but if you make your case this way, the elastic and metal crimper will add more bulk to the back side. It's not overly problematic, and it can be reduced by clamping or hammering the crimpers flat before installing them. It is also less noticeable once you insert your cover art. All of these ideas are not intended to be an exact blueprint, but rather building blocks towards encouraging you to creatively improve your game storage. I tried to use commonly available and inexpensive parts to design these cases, but there are many other case types out there that I never considered. Some might be easier to work with, or need fewer modifications, or might fit your personal needs better. For instance, to hold odd cartridges like these, you could alter the design and modify the artwork dimensions and use a VHS clamshell instead. Or perhaps you want to use that VHS case or a double DVD case and convert both sides to hold more games. Here I experimented with using a PS3 case to hold four Game Boy games. Or with what we've learned, we can convert many different case types to hold 3DS, DS, or PS Vita cards. Maybe you have a better idea of how to hold the cartridges. If so, please share your thoughts. I've given you several options and ideas because ultimately this isn't my project, it's yours. Hopefully I've at least given you a starting point in thinking about your game storage and your game room. Thank you very much for watching. This is the seventh video of my game room idea series. Here's a playlist if you'd like to see any previous entries. I have another video in the works, so if I've earned it, please subscribe. And liking this video is very appreciated, but also please share it. Somebody you know would like to see this idea.